Um, so, uh, this is what we're going to be looking at this weekend. It's what is the Great Commission? So, um, what do you understand by that, somebody? What's that mean? The Great Commission. Like what God wants us to do. Okay, it's something specific. Mm, not sure. Okay. Well, we'll hopefully answer it today. What are we going to say, Pete? What is my purpose in life? It is, it is actually one of your purposes in life, for sure. But So the Great Commission specifically refers to um, the commandment that Jesus gave us to go out and make disciples to all nations. So um, do you want to go to the next slide and play the video? Um, it's going to tell us a little bit more about what the Great Commission is and why it's important. Who is the church? You are the church. Jesus told the church to go. Jesus told you to go. Has the church ignored him? Have you? Is the church ignoring the command to go and tell them? We are each part of the problem, but we can be a part of the solution. The most glorious reason you exist is for the proclamation of the glory of God to the ends of the earth. Do you believe that? Does your church believe that? Are you living for you? or him. Repent means to change direction in the midst of what's going on. Change. The Great Commission is our responsibility. It's not a choice. Do you need to change? Does your church need to change? What are you doing for eternity? What will the 6.2 billion be doing for eternity? Church, we are plan A, and there is no plan B. David Platt is a missionary, so um, that was some of his quotes in there. And so yeah, as the video was, it's, it's quite like a bold video, but I think it really highlights some of the lies that we may have been told, like a lie, for example, that you know everybody knows about Jesus. I don't need to tell them, you know, they'll see it on the uh, the news or or wherever. But um, look at looking at the statistics, there is still thousands like tens of thousands of unreached people groups all around the world. And not only that, um, there's like statistics that say that about only one in, if, in one in ten people actually are true followers of Christ. Um, about, I think it's two in ten people would say that um, they've heard about Christ, um, but they have chosen not to follow him. And the statistics go on and on, but basically the point is, is that even though there might be people who have heard about Christ, um, they've kind of decided to ignore it, or alternatively, there's people that haven't heard about him at all. So this harvest is really great. Like, there is lots of work to be done. Um, and not only that, I think the video really highlights that it wasn't a suggestion that Christ would say, 
to some people, go out and make disciples, it was a commandment. So just like we think about the other commandments, like do not steal, do not kill, like this is a commandment just like every other commandment. Jesus wants us to go out and make disciples of all nations and to preach the gospel. So it's just the same as any, any other commandment in the Bible. So, um, and not only that, it was the last thing Jesus said to his disciples, the last. So think about it, your friend, someone close to you, is on their deathbed. You're gonna listen really intently to what they have to say. And not only that, they're not gonna say something like that isn't important to them on the last on their last words. They're not gonna say, oh, I think I forgot to turn the smoses off. <laughs> they're gonna say <laughs> they're gonna say something really important. It's <laughs> okay, we can yeah. <laughs> um so they're going to say something really important, so that's why we really have to take heed and listen and try and obey what he said. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, not only that, I think sometimes uh, we have this misconception that sort of preaching, evangelism, that's for, you know, a certain type of Christian denomination, the like the evangelical Christians, they're the ones that go out and preach and stuff. We're Orthodox, we don't we don't do that, you know, we, we just focus on our in our inner spiritual life. And obviously we're gonna highlight as well this weekend that obviously is the, the beginning because you can't have the internal without you can't have the external without the internal. But um, I think we have to realise that the early church fathers and the apostles were the biggest preachers. They were the biggest advocates for um, preaching and evangelism, and that's something that we can't forget. So, St. John Chrysostom, he's an early church father, for those of you who haven't heard of him. And he says, I do not believe in the salvation of those who do not work for the salvation of others. So, it's a pretty big thing to say that he's basically saying that your salvation isn't true if you are not stirred and you're not driven to work for the salvation of others because if you really think about it and break it down, if you really have seen and tasted Christ, then just like it says in the book of Acts, it says they could not help but speak of the things that they had seen and heard. They couldn't help it because they could really see how amazing this was. It was like having a cure to this disease, something that you know people have been looking for for time and time, like cancer, for example. If someone had a cure to cancer and they didn't share it, you would sort of suspect maybe you don't really have the cure. But if we really believe that we have the cure, if we really believe that we have the key to eternal life, which is better than a cure to a disease that's only in the earthly realm, then how could we not share it? So that's why St. John Chrysostom is saying, I don't believe in the salvation of those who don't work for the salvation of others, because if your heart is not yearning for those people, because if we say that we love others, then we'll want them to know Christ, because that's the best thing for them. If we want them to see what we've seen, then that's, that is the ultimate goal because if we really, like I said, if we really tasted the sweetness of Christ, we want everybody to know it. We want everyone to see it. So yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'm sorry this is a bit snippety, but it's just all the things that I really feel like have touched me and have um, really like got me thinking about evangelism. So. Um, so you might say that you know a lot of people have not had the chance to read the Bible, and um, you know they, they just don't get the opportunities we've had. Like we've been given so much, being born into the Orthodox Church, we've like been really gifted at that. But for those that haven't, we are a living gospel for them. We are the fifth gospel, so. Um, like obviously it's four gospels, <laughs> and we 
Oh, the, the other gospel, because we're, um, we're like, we should be the, the living and breathing um, examples of how Christ lived or how, um, how he spoke to people, how, what he taught in the Bible. So um, that's what we really have to see ourselves as that we might be the only gospel that someone reads. So, like, we have to live out the gospel. We have to let the word of God be, like, living and alive in us. And for that to be, like, pouring out of us so that when people meet us, it won't be like they're at a disadvantage from not having read the Bible or seen, uh, or seen the things that we've seen, but we'll, like, be pouring out the words through the things that we say, through the things that we do, through the way that we love, like a love that only can be seen in the gospel, like a love that, that means to sacrifice, that means to really lay down your life for other people because that's something that's against the world, that's something that we don't see in the world, that for you to put yourself above others, for you to, um, to love in a way that's just extraordinary or radical. Um, yeah, and just one of the last quotes I really like on that last side was saying that it's just like one beggar telling the other beggar where to get food. So it's not like we think that we're you know, these great mighty, mighty Christians like who's gonna like change the world, but we're just beggars and we found where we can get food. So we wanna share that with somebody and just telling telling another beggar we're like, Hey look, I found somewhere that's giving out free food come and join, like, of course you want to tell them. Just like if you, I was saying before, for example, with finding the cure to cancer, or, or even if, like, anyway, if you found free food anywhere, you'd be like, guys, <laughs> there's free food over there. So you don't want to tell people, like, even at first, if you want beggars, <laughs> we're, we're, like, dying to tell people when we find free food. Um, okay, and the thing that, like, I feel like we really want to get out of this weekend as well is the, is the how because I think that as much as we know this is the right thing for us to do that this is uh, something Christ has commanded us that this is uh, like a commandment um, we still struggle with the how I think because we find it quite intimidating we think oh no like how am I gonna how am I gonna preach the gospel how am I, I don't know anything like it just fills us with panic dread <laughs> but um, an example that I really like is it's just like putting a light on inside a room and then just opening a window. So, uh, and this is where it comes in that we um, have to fill ourselves with light in the beginning and um, and then just open the window. And then that's, that's the way people will see and that's how people will know because when we're filled with Christ and he is living in us, then like, yeah, opening, opening the, the curtains, opening the blinds, like, everyone will be able to see the message of the gospel. Everyone will be able to see Christ. Um, so, yeah, I think, as I was saying before, like, everything has to be, like, through inside out. Nothing can be, like, external actions and then try and, like, work on the inside. Obviously, like, it's a, it's a process and we're growing. Um, but we always have to remember that to, to keep like Christ in front of our eyes and to know that that's why we're doing this because we are in love with Christ and we want people to know about him and we are doing this for his glory and not our own. So that's why it's really important to keep Christ like the centre and to, um, to be like illuminated from the inside um, out. Um, yeah, and so this is a verse that I, I keep going on, but say like, taste and see. So it's in the Psalms, I think Psalms um, 33. Um, yeah, oh, 34. <laughs> so it's, uh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So just like we were saying about the Samaritan woman, when she said, come and see the man who told me everything I know, um, he told me everything about myself, um, it's similar, like, taste and see. So... I want you to come and see. I want you to come and taste what I've tasted. And like we were saying before, like free food, like nice food, like we're gonna wanna share it with people. We wanna tell them like 
Come and taste the sweetness of Jesus. Come and taste how beautiful he is and how gracious he is and how abundant like his gifts are and how good his grace is. Um, and similarly, like, um, like as, as I was saying that like, it's not, it doesn't have to be something that we inflate to be complicated. Like, it's just come, come and see, come and experience what I've experienced. And um, just as like another example, um, I really like the analogy of people saying that it's like being a witness in a court trial, although not as intimidating, but um, you don't have to be the lawyer, basically. You don't have to put across your arguments and, and say, this, this, this. You're just the witness. So all a witness really needs is eyes and ears. It could be anybody on the street like who's witnessed a, a crime or a, an accident or anything. They've just got eyes and they've got ears, and we all have eyes and ears. So, and we all have um, tasted and seen and experienced Christ. And so that's all we're really sharing. We just... Whatever we've received, we give, um, and that's again internal to external because we've received this thing and now we're, we're um, just witnessing to it. And that's all evangelism is, it's witnessing, it's declaring the things that you've seen. Um, so, yeah, this is just another video, sorry, I'm giving you lots of videos because um, it's better than me speaking, um, but this video, it's just, um, he's by a poet, and his, his words are always really beautiful, and, and so he's, he's basically, it's like just an empowering message about how, like, we've been given so much, and, you know, as the Bible said, like, too much is given, much is expected, so, like, we have everything we need to do what, like, Christ has commanded us, he would never tell us to do anything without, like, giving us the like equipment and every the things that we need. So uh, this is just a video about it, and I really just really like it. So I'm gonna share it with you guys. I write to you. Poets and martyrs, disciples and daughters, elders and brothers, Christians and lovers, pastors and teachers, prophets and preachers, I write to you, leaders, that you might gather the weapons from your armories, grab your pulpits and mics, your stages and lights, your buildings and pews, your resources be used, for the wife has been bruised. Her body beaten and bludgeoned. She's cheated on the man she once pursued. For the bride has now forgotten her husband. I write to you, for you have been summoned. That you might sacrifice your church services and your functions. Your evening worship and your luncheons. Bring your members by the dozens. No matter your shortcomings or dysfunctions. You have been summoned to bear this insistence. That God wants to use every part of your existence. And none of you are any different. If your church is slowing or resurgent. Older or but an infant. You are part of the resistance. To stand your ground against the armies of apathy rising against us. I write to you, for I see Christians, but I don't see Christ. I see people living, but not surrendering life. I see large buildings that cannot see strife. I see free salvation that is way underpriced. I see a body called to poverty by wealth be enticed. And I know you see it too. Our allegiance has been spliced. We're unsatisfied with the riches of this world when God's kingdom should have sufficed. So I write to you who are soon to be revolutionaries to encourage you in the cause you will be influencing. I write to you to tell you that you have all that you need. 
And that's not another book, conference, facility, or degree. For Christ conquered death with only a tree. And if you have more than that, how much more will he want to see? You see, you have all that you need. For you have breath, feet, blood, tears, pulse, hands, eyes, ears. You have brothers and sisters, resources and givers, a world full of sin and a God that is bigger. You have all that you need and you're going to need all that you have. For the life influenced by Christ cannot be given in halves. It will not spare a drop. It will not scare or stop, but will sell all it's got for that treasure in the empty lot. You will need all that you have, for you have all that you need, and all you need is all he has, for all he has is all you need. With great urgency, I write this muse, for the one thing we do not have is an excuse. We have a mighty God who became poor and bruised. What we do not have is an excuse. We have the Holy Spirit inhabited for God's own use. What we do not have is an excuse. We have a sure resurrection, the power of death diffused. What we do not have is an excuse. We have the words of life, the greatest of news. What we do not have is an excuse. That is why I write to you this insisting issuance that you might lead with great prudence to a world full of darkness. May we be a holy nuisance as we lead the cause of Christ through the power of His influence. Jesus only had a tree and he conquered death, so how much more like, should we be doing when we have so much? We have everything that we need. Um, so yeah, and I think that another point that also highlights is that um, like it says like we don't need more like events and dinners and um, conferences, ironically. <laughs> what we need is to actually go out and, and do something because um, I think, like, like sadly, like we have a tendency to always um, kind of focus slightly too much on the the growth in, in our church, and like, I think I mean that's it's great um, that we've like really like tried to empower and um, to grow like the church and our youth, but now it's like it's time to move, it's time to go out, and it's time to. Um, really share what we've give, been given and share the things that we have because um, like, that's what we're trying to like fill ourselves for. Um, so yeah, um, I, sh I just think that like this is another quote by um, Jim Elliot, who was um, a missionary, um, which we might see the the film more later. Depends on what you guys choose, um, but. He says that he is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. So, um, yeah, I kind of just want to like leave you with that to think about because, um, like, I think that sometimes we're like we're afraid like what will people think of us or you know um, to really live a life that is like a living sacrifice to Christ and. Um, you know, we think about missionaries and we're like, well, no, I could never, could never do that. I can never go out and just leave everything and um, be a missionary. But he, Jim Elliot says, like, like you, he's not a fool, but giving up, up the things that are just temporal, basically, and of this earth to get something that you can't lose, and that's eternity. So, um, and it's the treasure that's in heaven. Um, so. Um, I think that's just something to think about. And, um, like, I really, really urge you to look into like the stories of some missionaries, like modern day missionaries, um, Jim Elliot, David Platt, David Livingston, and see their lives. Like, they were just ordinary people, just like us. And um, we have some quotes around the room for you to, to look at. Um, and so, yeah, that 
the Bible is filled with stories of ordinary people who are used by him. Like just today I was reading about Moses and when he was um, talking to Pharaoh and the things that uh, he was saying to God and he was saying, you know, I, I can't speak. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to stutter or I can't, um, I'm not brave enough. And like God equips um, the unequipped and so he gives us all that we, all that we need. Um, and similarly, like, Jonah was a coward, like, Moses was, like, a murderer, so never think that, like, you can't be used by God, like, everyone here, like, God wants to use you for this mission, and, um, like, he's going to equip you, so, glory be to God for that. <laughs>